If there is no culture, there is no nation. From the times of the Crimean Khanate to the Crimean annexation. How to preserve your identity and national image? What is encoded in the works of Crimean Tatar craftsmen and what does it have in common with Ukrainian ornaments? How do the traditional Crimean Tatar crafts survive in current conditions? Stay with us to find out. <laughs> It is historically proven that if you destroy the culture and art on a certain territory, the nation will die with it. In the 21st century, Crimean Tatars are faced with a similar peril. These ties have been severed by the Russian occupation. The Crimeans are trying to preserve their culture despite the constant repressions. They want to develop their traditions and create new masterpieces. According to Crimean Tatar activist Erfan Kudusov, who had to leave his homeland together with many of his compatriots after the annexation of Crimea, the nation's soul lives in the creations of people. But when we get Crimea back, I hope that our rich culture will be open for Europe, Ukraine and the whole world. Crimean Tatars created their own unique style in art during their long history on the peninsula's territory. In the 15th century, the craftswork of the Crimean Khanate workers was evaluated all over the world and through the years it only became better. The best craftsmen from all parts of the world came to Bakhchisarai. Then there were higher learning institutions, which Europe didn't have. Of course, this had an impact on our culture and the beautiful Eastern culture, but we also have elements similar to some European and Ukrainian cultures. The level of Crimean Tatar art is evidently high because it was recognized during the international exhibition of modern decorative and industrial arts in Paris in 1925. The exhibition of traditional Crimean Tatar art was awarded a gold medal. Even in the 1920s and the 1930s, the folk crafts were still popular and new forms of art emerged. Alim the Robber is the only example of a masterpiece film which tells the history of the Crimean Tatars. It is a renaissance of sorts which happened in 1920s in Crimean Tatar culture. This was a revival of crafts, cinema and theater. It can be even said that under the harsh totalitarian regime, the culture still progressed. Unfortunately, today the situation is worse than it was back in those times. There is no autonomy today and the culture is developing not thanks to, but in spite of everything. For the last 250 years, the Crimean Tatars find it harder and harder to develop their nation near an aggressive northern neighbor, especially after the brutal genocide of the Stalin regime. Their cultural heritage was almost obliterated. Libraries were destroyed and museums were plundered. Collectors managed to find and preserve something, but it was just a tiny bit of a great historical and cultural heritage that was built up by the Crimean Tatars over hundreds of years, Erfan Kudusov recounts with regret. The Crimean Tatar culture was almost eradicated. The arts and crafts were destroyed. This was because it was almost impossible to take anything with you during the deportation. Every element of the old culture is precious to us. In the first months after the annexation of Crimea in 2014, many ceramists and artists who were well aware of the disastrous history of the 1944 deportation, tried to save their artifacts, which then comprised the first exhibition of Crimean Tatar art in Kiev and other cities. The Russian aggression and occupation naturally had a negative impact on the development of culture in general and on our culture on the whole. Nevertheless, the nation managed to find its strengths. Our master craftsmen make their crafts anew from nothing, as particularly everything was destroyed. What you can see in the gallery are the works of around 30 craftsmen, among them ceramists, painters, embroiders and weavers. We also make glass work, stained glass and felts. Today we are practically recreating our culture. Here we have an example of cotton. Cotton is kind of a symbol of deportation for some Crimean Tatars. We were doing slave labor back then, as the village children had to harvest for four months after the fourth grade. The development of Crimean Tatar art has come a long, difficult and dramatic way. Nowadays, Ukrainians are rediscovering the artistic world of Crimean Tatars with their bright southern colors and the unsinkable eastern flair.
I will tell you something that may be obvious. Almost nobody knows Crimean Tatar culture here. Maybe a small percentage of people knows about our ceramics, Rustem Skibin and Marina Kurushli. Some know about the embroiderers. Basically, Crimean Tatar culture is terra incognita. We ourselves don't know a lot. Even the Crimean Tatars don't know a lot about their culture. This is not due to the lack of interest, but because our culture was practically banned during the deportation period. That's why it's very important for us to understand our culture and to inform Ukrainians and the whole world about it. И донести ее до, до украинцев, до всего мира. There is a lot in common between Ukrainian and Crimean Tatar cultures, according to Kudusov. If you look closer at the ornaments and patterns on the ceramic jugs and carpets, everywhere you will be able to find numerous evidence of the closeness of the two cultures. This carpet is made using an old Crimean Tatar technique, which has similarities to some Ukrainian patterns. This tells us that the peoples didn't just wage war against one another, they also lived together, exchanged technologies, knowledge and cultural achievements, so that is how it was. For Ukrainians and Europeans and the whole world in general to understand the situation, the problem the Crimean Tatars face, the current political problem, the easiest and the most elegant way is through cultural contacts. This is the best, safest and most necessary step in the modern world. The Crimean Tatar artists tried to pass on this message in the Ukrainian parliament with the exhibition of their works during the cultural and human rights event Day of Crimea in the Parliament of Ukraine. We want to emphasize yet again that Crimean Tatars exist as people. The main task is to restore our state as an autonomous Crimean Tatar Republic in Ukraine. The national culture of Crimean Tatars can be more or less supported outside Crimea. And in Crimea, the chauvinism against Crimean Tatars is pervasive and is aimed at driving them off the peninsula. There is no future for the Crimean Tatar culture and people in their motherland as long as the occupants are there. So when we are asked by various international organizations how they can help us, I answer that the only way is by liberating Crimea, because a nation cannot survive under occupation. Conditions are created on the occupied territories which render the survival of the Crimean Tatar culture impossible. This is one of the mechanisms of the so-called latent deportation, when the nation is torn away from its elite. But the situation with the occupation of Crimea also gives the Crimean Tatar elite the ability to show its culture to the whole world. This may play a strategic role in the deoccupation of Crimea. That's why the totalitarian regime's policy is short-sighted and may trigger the opposite effect. It is most important to make a statement as a nation to state that we Crimean Tatars are the indigenous people with a rich culture that was formed thousands of years to become the way it is today. We have a strong foundation and a strong potential that we can realize. There is a saying, every dark cloud has a silver lining. An answer to the Russian government's repression can be a positive answer to the world, opening Crimean Tatar art to the world, to show it and to accept it. I think that art is that universal tool which can be used to unite people. Erfan Kudutov thinks that for a nation to survive, it's not enough to just preserve the relics of the past. Traditional Crimean Tata art must be developed today, and the knowledge and skills of arts and crafts must be passed on to the younger generation. It is a very important task for us. We try to fight using every means possible. We try to use every opportunity to open workshops and to organize embroidery, dancing and language groups. Although we are a part of the Ukrainian nation, we are exotic since we are Muslims, and this leaves a certain mark. Here you can see the flame beyond ceramics, which are made by Rustem Skibin school. 
Bruce Demskibbing is a prominent pottery designer and master of oriental ornaments. In his glazed ceramics, Skibin integrates ancient pottery traditions, which appeared in Crimea in the 12th century. Even a person unschooled in Crimean Tatar art would recognize the brightly colored, unmistakable art of Bruce Demskibbing. These ceramic eggs are also made by Rustem Skibbing. They are the size of an ostrich egg, but are made of clay. Last year, I have presented one of the eggs to Ukraine's Metropolitan Filaret. Tabaklar, the decorative plague made by Skibbing, are in the collections of George Bush, Stefan Fule, and George Soros. The ceramist makes his works from clay, which has to be transported all the way from Slavyansk near Donetsk. There were clay deposits in Crimea that were used by the ceramists. Unfortunately, today we don't have the ability to use that clay. Here are some more ceramists, such interesting works of Abdul made of Crimean clay. Here Ukrainian patterns are combined with the work of the Crimean Tatar craftsmen. The patterns were done by Ukrainian Irina Tislenko, the master's wife. Crimean Tatar pottery is easily distinguished by its unique ornaments and symbols. Pottery ornaments mostly consist of floral and geometric patterns. Every flower painted on the pottery symbolizes the cycle of generations. The roses represent maternity. Almond is a daughter, a young girl. Dianthus, a grandmother. Wisdom. Tulip is a young boy. This may be his wife, his mother, or someone else, an adult woman, that is. This panel picture shows us a big family. We also have these interesting works by Rustem Skibbing. They are called Bardock. These elongated elements are symbols of masculinity. Crimean Tatar art is mysterious and at the same time magnificent. Every element of the pottery, embroidery or carpet ornaments is not just a line, an accidental twirl or a tried flower. Indeed, these patterns contain a deep, encoded meaning. There is a classic prayer rug, a namazg for the namaz prayer. This element, the sharp one, points to Mecca. This means we must pray in that direction. In the times when it was prohibited to depict living things in Islam as it is today, the colorful floral approach has flourished. Women embroider different flowers and plants making ornaments, which practically contain certain messages. The examples of embroidery that was made by Venera Kurmaeva and a couple of other craftsmen, it's called Together. This calligraphical inscription means together. The second element is the picture. The almond means girl, the tulip, a boy. And here we have Lila Kashiva's work, a magnificent embroidery of exhibition level. Art historians don't know much about it. One of our art historians, Mahmoud Churlu, helped to create a group called Crimean Style, which united many of our artists and craftsmen. They use the ornamental language in their creations. This is also an interesting work. It's called a cuckoo. It can be seen at Ramzan's UNESCO's personal exhibition in the United Arab Emirates. This author's creative style is very memorable. The works of the Crimean artist Ramzan Usainov are known far and wide. They are kept in private collections and galleries in Poland, Germany and the US. Art historians call him an artist of Western European tradition. Everything Usainov paints is somehow theatrical. His canvases portray an incredible world of fantasy with interesting images and characters. His artistic path is connected with the East. That's why Eastern motives can be found in his paintings. Here is an interesting photograph taken by Ihor Haidai. As you can see, the year 2006, a very famous photographer. The photo was taken 10, even 11 years ago. This is the celebration of Kurban Bayram in ancient Crimea. Khan Uzbek's mosque. 250 people gathered here. Many of these people are not alive today. Saddened, Erfan ended his short tour of the gallery with a famous photograph, which once again reminded him about the lost Crimea. Every object in the gallery is dear to Erfan because it is connected to his motherland.
В Крыму сегодня права нет, его нет. There is neither law in Crimea nor in Russia, but it is doubly felt in Crimea because real bandits rule there, and it's easy for them to take everything and to steal and plunder that which does not belong to them. То, что им не принадлежит, это для них это легко. Че вот, да. Despite the misfortunes, Erfan Kudusov is sure that contemporary Crimean Tatar artists show us unique creations. They recreate the craftsmanship of ancestors who have survived to our times. Their professional level is worthy of presenting the Crimean Tatar art of the beginning of the 21st century to the world.